The aftermath of the events surrounding Saint Asaph became somewhat of a blur to most of you. After the climactic fight against what could only be described as an abomination, the cleanup crew proceeded to sweep through the city, capturing or killing the remains of the chimeras that their, well, cybernetics went haywire, and gathering and escorting civilians to safety, making all the precautions in place to make the event not reach the public as best as they can. The rest of this process lasted roughly another day, 24 hours. And while some of you volunteered to aid the process, and while, well, others were moved to the nearest hospital, the efforts of Counterforce saved roughly 75% of the small town of St. Asaph, while the rest are either confirmed dead or missing. However, that small statistic doesn't tell us what happened to various faces that we saw along this journey. Some point after the abomination and the fight itself, one Charlotte was quickly and did not really attempt to escape due to her injuries, etc. You've been somewhat just kind of relaxing as best as you can in this moment. Like, the exhaustion has very much hit you from everything that has gone on. And you see, well, Frank Adams approach with um, Charlotte being led by two of the counterforce officers. He's just kind of approach. He looks, he, he looks like a corpse walking at this point. Have you both seen your captain? He's been around, sir, but truth be told, I think it's been one hell of a day for everyone involved. I think he's just still trying to pick up the pieces, you know, especially of Wildcard. Yeah, uh, I'm sorry for that, but um, I'm sure I'll make it through. Oh, hopefully. He's a tough sort. Yeah, he kind of looks back to Charlotte that is just clearly just she looks rough there's like a chunk of her like her entire eye is gone and there's just an entire basically like chunk out of her face all right you two um mind locking her up for a moment processing her sticking her into the containment it was made for battery but it should hold someone like her i i think we can probably do that we're gonna yeah. go find Agent Frazier. Come on. These two guys cause kind of like lead them up to you and just like hand her off. She's not handcuffed as of right now, but they kind of have their guns on their sides just kind of escorting her. As they proceed to follow. Their captain. She just kind of puts her hands up. Just go ahead and lock me up, I guess. This is what I deserve, after all. Let's see here. I believe it was... Ah, yes, these ones. He kind of, like, casually approaches with a pair of handcuffs that are, uh... Well, let's just say they might be a size or two too big. He just kind of looks at you for a moment. Oh, no. <laughs> ah, yes. We apparently have a shortage of handcuffs at the moment or something. These were the only ones I could find. And, uh, this containment unit seems a bit experimental. I don't know if the locking mechanism works. Do you think it does, Amelia? She's just slowly, like, uh, usher her into it. Uh, I'm not sure. Oh, well, we'll just have to close it then and hope nothing happens. It's not like she could have possibly uh, melt into her surroundings and get away. That would be ridiculous. She just kind of, like, smirks at you. 
Doesn't say a word, it's just goes and just sits in this very much like rubbered out interior of this like a uh, transport vehicle. <laughs> as you both slowly shut. Eventually, as you both wander off, aiding in the process of this uh, day, one door is slowly creaked open and one Charlotte proceeds to escape. Frazier! You are currently moving this man to out of a police vehicle to one of the counter force um, vehicles itself. You just transported him here and, well, handing them off so he can move to containment. He's just kind of is struggling out of his handcuffs, trying to fight against you. Bastard. Let no me go. use, kid. He spits on you <laughs> like it just hits your chest. Mm, I really want to knock you out right now. Uh, sir, do you... We can take it from here. Ah, uh, yes, that'd be appreciated. Stupid kid. You can hear him yelling as they <laughs> load him back up into the back of the uh, thing. And as you turn around, you see one Frank Adams approach. A few guards walk around and he's just... There you are. Hmm. Frank. No, you're hard to find. Oh, uh, not my problem. <laughs> yeah, but it sure is mine. Hmm. I have some questions for you. Yeah, what is it? From what I can tell, hmm. You went offline for like a few hours. No communication, we couldn't reach you. And then you appeared with a giant flesh monster. Right. I'm not going to say that I've seen worse than that, but that's still somewhat surprising. Can you... He just kind of rubs the bridge of his nose for a moment. Can you please explain me what the hell happened? Uh, well... We went into the doctor's sort of underground base... It's all very cliche. Um, Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> I guess evil layer. And, well, we got down there and ended up splitting up into three groups of two. I wasn't actually there when they found the doctor and he turned himself into whatever that was. But, yeah. Basically, we shut down the Owl bear things from within there. We stopped the doctor in a way, I guess, from whatever he was trying to do with his daughter. And uh, okay. I was able to find Pembroke. And we all got out of there, and that's, you know, ended up where we called you in. What do you mean, find Pembroke? Was um, with you? Spit it out. No. He wasn't with us when we went in. He, uh... Went dark for a little while. Don't really know what happened. I assume he got abducted considering he seemed not in the best shape when we found him. He's just kind of an odd. You know, lying to me. It's not the smartest idea, right? When did I lie to you? If you're lying to me in this instance, we'll figure it out. Why? The doctor apparently hard. From what we can find so far, apparently there was recordings of every single one of those creatures that he controlled. He logged them. Is there anything else that you would like to say? Uh, no, that's about all that happened. He just kind of nods to that. He just kind of starts walking away. I 
That was a test. If you knew anything about technology, you know it's almost impossible to keep that much data logged. He just waves his hands. But I'm sure I'll find something. Don't I know do. why you expect that I'm lying to you. He kind of stops, and it's almost before he like turns around, you feel... You just hear, I wouldn't move if I was you. And you feel something ruffle in your pocket. It's very uncomfortable. <laughs> I don't know. A gifted was helping you. One responsible. One that I assume was working with that doctor. Seems a little suspicious to me. Just kind of puts his hands up. Have a good day, Fraser. You check your pocket? Yes. There is a single note within your pocket. It is a... The voice within your ear was very much familiar. You immediately picked up that it was Charlotte, and this is a location to meet her one week from now, back in London. And, well, it simply states, if you want to gain the location of Pearl, I would come see me. With that, we move on. After loading up this guy, Fraser. You eventually find, well, Dahi, and both make your way back to the precinct. Not every part of this area is currently, well, cleared up yet. Clearing an entire town takes a long time, but as you kind of get out of the vehicle itself, you see one... Paul, kind of leaning against the vehicle, just kind of looking at his hands for a moment as he himself looks pretty banged up. There's a lot of blood kind of staining his clothes that you can probably assume is most of the beasts around you. He did have an act for using his hands versus a gun. Paul. Uh, hey. You, uh, you doing all right? Yeah. Just resting. Did you, uh, did you find her? Yeah, we, uh, we found her. He just kind of gives you a confused look. Where is she? Well... <clears throat> We, I had her with me until the doctor started attacking, so I, I sent her off with, with battery. They're gonna, we have to meet up with them and get Pearl, and then we'll take her to Jennifer. Of course, that's only part of the problem. What do you mean? I... I don't understand why... I mean, I'm happy you got her out of the... out of the lab, but... Wouldn't she be safer here rather than with... them? Well, um... <sighs> I'm assuming you met one of the people that have been experimented on by the doctor have animal features to them yeah he was at the precinct with you guys before you guys took off also he helped me knock out the satan dude in the church so yeah but cory wouldn't know that i don't think i mean he you did see him in the precinct and i guess 
Charlotte yeah. was there. But Charlotte yeah. is the one that looks the least like she. Yeah, she looks. Besides the giant mm. like animal ears, but um, yeah, we uh, we took the uh, the angel kid wings. Yeah, that blighter. What does that have to do with Pearl? We didn't get to her in time to stop that. He's just kind of processing almost. Thinking. I, I, I don't understand. He like slowly gets up, kind of stumbles a little bit, leans against the What do we, what do we do now? He just looks towards you guys for answers. Look, our superior, I guess, already was trying to take Charlotte in for being gifted. They do the same exact thing, the Pearl. My suggestion is that you go into hiding. Well, she goes into hiding. He's just... I... I'm not sure what to uh... say, but yeah, it's probably... Hmm. He just kind of like scratches the in like the the his chin for a moment, just kind of like trying to process it. He's not the smartest individual in the world. I I'm pretty sure Wildcard mentioned something about a farm that Jennifer and Pearl could go to. Stay there for a while. I mean, is that safe? With you guys being connected and all? Well, I mean, no. I have, I have nowhere else to go. But at the same time, it's safer if we know where they are. And besides, she's still the same girl on the inside. The only thing that changed is the outside. We'll, uh, we'll do everything we can to help you get through this, but I actually wanted to make you an offer. <clears throat> I don't... You're already offering me so much. I don't... No, I don't I, know what else you could give me. I want you to come work with us. He kind of, like, gives you a dumbfounded look for a moment. It's just like... Uh, I don't... I'm just... A beat cop. He, like, looks back at the... The police precinct, and he says, Well, I guess at this point, probably gonna be an ex-beat cop. I did steal a police car. Yeah, and we're the backup squad that let two gifted get away. I think he'd be a great fit. Yeah. <laughs> and trust me, I've seen firsthand that you're more than capable of holding your own. Let me, uh, let me think about it. I want to make sure Pearl and um, Jennifer are safe before I make any decisions. Of course. Always a good idea. Will I, uh, <laughs> he, like, thinks for a moment, will I get, will I get paid for this position? Because I kind of unemployed and. Well, I, I really hope so. We are getting paid, right, Captain? Uh, yeah, I think. You guys are being paid. <laughs> um, but he, because, like, uh, I imagine going into hiding is not the cheapest thing in the world. How much does it cost to run a farm? 
Uh, I wouldn't know. Uh, all right. I'm gonna. Oh. Yeah. Trust me, I have a few ideas on that matter, but I'll have to look into them when I get back into well, civilization. He's just. Thank you. Uh, truly. Um, I'm gonna. What do you mind giving me a ride? I've already transferred Jennifer to one of the uh, hospitals. Yeah, yeah, sure. He just kind of nods. Have a safe trip. So, uh, is that he just kind of starts walking? Is that do you also steal a police car? Um. Uh. Wasn't me. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I'm not a snitch or anything, so... Just kind of walks around. And with that... Both of you... Head to the nearest hospital. As many of you... Left at various times. Two of you, however... Remained... Within... Well... St. Asaph a little longer, volunteering to help with the cleanup a little bit further. It is no simple feat to, firstly, scan the entire town. But once the locations were secure of one Dr. Valavov's lab, the next many, many hours were cleaning it out, taking any resource resources that he had there, any research, etc. And two of you were tasked with aiding in that effort. Both of you find yourself in, well, the cybernetic section um, of the labs itself. Most of the doors have been unlocked by the mechanisms at the beginning that, you know, flooded the chimeras that remained in the facility towards you. However, this one door has not opened. Um, so, after trying to open it with no, no success, eventually one Eugene Spence was kind of brought in, and he's currently just working away at this mechanism that is part of the door, trying to force it to unlock. So both of you were in here? Eh, briefly. This place looks like hell. Or was. Not an inaccurate statement, considering the amount of things that were in here. Although, would it be a circus or a zoo? Not to mention the things that took place here. Ah, so definitely hell. Alright, this to do it. He just kind of slots it, you hear a click, and it begins to open. Oops. Revealing. A giant, almost, pod. It... As you guys have been working through this, you've seen several of these. They're almost like sleeping chambers that he has kept a lot of his chimeras in as he was working on them. Keeping them alive without them having to basically, you know, function. This one, however, is huge. Almost... You can very much fit a human or something like that in it. This... More than a human, actually. This one, in particular, looks to probably have been the resting place of that now unknown uh, location of that giant chimera that you had so much trouble with throughout the course of this but it remains empty. Ah, oh, it's just a big one of the others. I was really hoping for something interesting. Another pod. Goodness. He just kind of steps in. <laughs> he certainly liked these things, that's for sure. Hmm. 
He just k kicks this little, like, uh, container here. Mm. I'll let the guys know. That one's not going to be as easy as taking it apart, so I'm going to go get a few people. He just kind of, like, walks out. I gotcha. Now, what does this button do? You probably shouldn't just start pressing buttons. Uh, probably I, but I don't know. I'm feeling lucky. All right, I'm going to step back then. <laughs> You you hit a button and basically it begins to almost it, everything on the system just turns red in an instant. See, I told you you shouldn't have pressed. As you the hear button. a lot of cranking noise and like almost like steam come out of this thing as it begins to open up and just flood this bluish liquid into it. It's just like up to your like ankles as it just floods out. Oh, ew. oh, what is this yeah. stuff? And with the rushing of a water... <laughs> oh my god. Not what I had planned, but you know, it's funnier this way. There's just a clip for it with a file that just kind of slides out. But why was the... what? Someone seemed to have dropped it. What a lucky individual for this to happen. Huh. Not the ideal place to be storing that. Now, what do we have here? Well, this file in particular probably is one that he meant to throw away or get rid of at some point in particular. <laughs> Roll initiative. Um, and as you go through it, most of what I'll be ta telling you, etc., is further resor research that you would have to do otherwise, right? So a lot of this is just a collection of research that you would gain here and now, and also looking into things yourself. This, in particular, is more or less documenting and very much conveniently sealed in a waterproof case. <gasps> A collection of files that dictates the very serum that he puts in he put into his body to create himself into that monster it was a creation of several things firstly the well documenting his research and everything within these files and what else you found throughout the facility itself most of his research was taking and collecting of his own research that he has done well over 10 years within this facility. But a lot of it he takes from other researchers and applies it to create what he has been creating. One of those individuals is one that was mentioned before, Dr. Snezhana. A Russian researcher that went missing after his research was cancelled at Oxford, involving cryogenetics and a death of a student. Apparently, these blue liquid, the ones that just flood out, is this kind of cryogenetic... Um, uh, I guess compound is the best way to put it, that was used to basically freeze and keep these bodies in a stasis in order to allow it to continue living. In addition to that, the cybernetics was drawn from one Dr. Keisner, a researcher that currently is in prison, as he was caught doing human experimentations, along with many other crimes of the U.S., and is currently locked away. But there is a few things that simply do not add up here. Firstly, a single man does not contain the ability to build a facility of this size. It seems that he was sending his research to an unknown benefactor. You can't trace it or find any connections of where he was sending it or who he was going to. It seems that it would have very much dropped in one location almost not even in systematically, almost random, in random locations across St. Asaph, but also other places. 
Doctor seems to every couple months have made trips to London and various other cities within the UK. But there is... But with your luck, a simple word sticks out to you. Quantum. There's no sort of connection to anything else, but you've seen that written across the several areas of these research. The bright glowing blue vials that almost illuminated the one that the battery drank himself to become what he became are marked as something called CO7. He apparently requested it by his benefactor and you saw several notes and documentations of it that as he requested it from his benefactor it was denied. And you begin to connect the dots of what battery originally was, well, what led you to the town in first place. As Battery stated before, he went to find things. He had several trucks from, well, the Royal Gambit Casino. Several trucks were hit. But, lastly, the final piece in his serum that is the most concerning of all is blood transported from Russia marked with the initials VB. If it's only a coincidence, it is the same initials the one Victor Burginsky, Amelia's twin brother. This looks highly confidential. Yeah. Now, we both know there's no guarantee that this is related to him. I, I know, I know. But, at the same time, that is very disconcerting. Yeah. Not least of which the fact that he was apparently sent his research off to who knows where. This quantum fellow? Or someone else? Hmm. Well, I guess we have a few leads to look into then. Yes, definitely. So, oh, I have a question for you two. Are you going to turn over this file to Counterforce, or are you going to keep it yourself? Um, certain parts of it are gonna go missing. <laughs> you mind tell me what parts you want to keep to yourself and what parts you're gonna give over to him? Uh, I am straight up taking whatever formula he made that serum that turned him into a abomination, and I am burning that shit like on the spot. <laughs> um, damn, I can't do a sequel of another abomination. Damn it! I mean, you said he was already sending the research data to someone else. They probably already have it. I'm just making sure Counterforce doesn't get any ideas either. Yeah. But, uh, as far as the rest of that goes, like, yeah, Counterforce should know about this Quantum Fellow. That's fine. She'll know about, uh, of course, the fact that they had a benefactor, and that's the reason that he was going after the blue stuff. That's fine. But, uh, Anything that has VB on it is uh, going to mysteriously vanish. Okay. Um, by the way, the way it's like worded within his writings is quantum is less a like he's talking to an individual and more like talking to a body of people. I gotcha. Um, so I will just take a note that uh, that is the case there and just go. Boop, there we go. It's highlighted. The rest of your time within Dr. Balabov's lab and, well, the rest of the cleanup were boring, to say the least. Most of you, due to your just pure exhaustion itself, any of the clearing out of what remains of the, the chimeras were not, you were not involved. It was simply mostly the, the sweeping that did it. So hopefully they got all of them because... 
That would be bad if they didn't. But after all that was cleared up and in the final hours, the time counterforce spent within St. Asaph, Amelia made her way over to one known bakery. With a cling of the bell on the door, you walk in. You see, most of this place is still destroyed. Several of the chairs are smashed. There's still blood all over the the ground, etc. And well, it seems that Counterforce came in here, cleared the body, but didn't do much of anything else. You see one. You see one. Uh, McKinley. <laughs> Almost. It's just kind of in a day. She didn't even look up when you walked in. She did. She was injured, and but regardless, she was patched up, and she seems to just be almost furiously cleaning her place, not even taking a moment to rest. Miss McKinley. Oh, I'm 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 sorry. Uh, we're we're closed right now. I'm... I know. It's it's all right. Um. I believe you met me, um, I believe it was yesterday, um, before all this chaos went down. Um, yes, I, you came in here early in the morning and I, I believe I made, I made both you and your friend a sandwich. <laughs> Yes. Uh, at the time, I was still undercover, but let me reintroduce myself. I am Amelia Briginski with Counterforce. I was curious if we could sit down and talk for a second. She just kind of looks at the disarray of her, her store and says, uh, yeah, that, that's, that's fine. Um, do you mind if I make some tea? Um, that won't be necessary. Just, let's go sit over here. Okay. She slowly sits down and just kind of looks at you, waiting to see what, well, what you wanted to talk about. I'm... Not very good as far as conversation, and I'm not good at, I don't like to beat around the bush. Um, but that doesn't make telling you this any easier. Uh, during the events of the last day, we received word that your son didn't make it through the day. Her eyes almost fog over. I, I, I see. And, well, what hope Bethany McKinley had of finding her son is gone. In this moment, it's nothing but the strongest amounts of grief finally overtaking her. But... With that comes closure. Not now, not in this conversation that goes on for many of minutes. But eventually, she begins to work and cope with the loss of her son. Eventually, the conversation came down to a close. As Amelia eventually said her goodbyes, and one Bethany McKinley returns to her apartment. 
alone. But in time, she will heal. As will every person of Saint Asaph. And she is not the only one that has lost someone today. A few weeks after Saint Asaph, well, most of what was transported took weeks. The actual cleanup of the city and getting all that situation did take another day or so, but to simply move and process all of the stuff that was found in his lab, including all the bodies, etc., took a while. So a few weeks later, one Frank Adams proceeds into one of the many storage facilities of Fort Carter. He opens the door, walks out, and looks over, seeing someone he doesn't suspect to see in this moment. He just kind of slowly walks over. Shouldn't you be in a hospital bed? Someone jumps down almost easily from this top of this crate. A woman with burns over her body and a single glowing red eye. This is Kyra Smith. She is the sole leader and, well, to put it simply, she is in the position that one Corey Frazier is, but with Squad A. I was tired of sitting in there. Plus, I heard that you had many interesting things in venturing without me. <sighs> He's just... Frank Adams is kind of size. You should really get your rest. If you're not comfortable with coming back, then... You should... Hush now. Just kind of puts his hands up. How is that... Squad B doing? Hmm. I think they'll turn out all right. If you're back now, that means I don't have to watch them, right? Oh, no, that's that's still going to be your position, regardless if I'm back now. The dread immediately sets in to one Frank Adams. <sighs> so... Anything else that you found that you would like to share with me? Hmm. Well, as far as I'm aware... One Pembroke went missing for a few days. Well, not a few days, I mean, sorry. Ugh. He just kind of rubs the bridge of his nose. He went missing for a few hours during the events of, um, St. ASF. Not sure what he did, but apparently he appeared in the facility. Is this something that we should be concerned with? I'm not sure yet. He hasn't really left the barracks since then. Hmm. Almost cutting off this conversation, a... A moving truck of sorts begins to pull up. And as a few officers proceed to get out and begin slowly lowering something out of the back, a creature chained and well contained hmm she looks at it, it almost piques her interest in a moment. What do we have here? One of the beasts that Doctor made. They're not sure what to do it. I think they're going to send it over and put it down. No purpose leaving this thing locked up. As it tugs and pulls on its various trains, tr chains trying to break free. 
He approaches it. Slowly reaches out a hand. And it almost tries to bite at it. And she pulls it back. I want to get close to that thing. You already lost an eye. I don't want you to lose a hand. She just waves him off. Begins with the back of her palm, slowly reads forward. And the beast itself, now only one that is of a lion and a snake, slowly begins to revert its aggression as she reaches it slowly forward. And almost with the back of her palm, touches it in the nose. It's not that bad of a creature. No reason to put it down. Cancel that. I think I have... I think I will keep this one. Frank just gives her the same look on his pog and just... You think that's a good idea? Oh. I'm sure that it will come to be tamed. It's not that hard, after all. What do you mean it's not that hard? It's a fucking lion with a snake tail. <laughs> he just kind of gestures towards it. Don't worry. I think we'll get along quite well. He just begins to rub his bridge of his nose. And with that... The Chimera, now only two-thirds of what it used to be, begins to be tamed and trained by one Kyra Smith. As C is the only one within this very world that has the ability to tame a creature as mighty and fierce as this. And with that, the aftermath of St. Asaph comes to a close. For some of you, St. Asaph shaped who you are. Sacrifice that led to some separating from someone else's shadow to create their own. Making a leader out of someone that threw all that away many months ago. But for the people of St. Asaph, they did not have moments of grandeur. Their sickly town was stained in the blood of Dr. Valivov's grief, and for many of them, this was the final push that caused them to leave what they called home. St. Asaph now remains nothing more than a ghost town, one not forgotten, but one left as a fading memories of the events that occurred. For Squad B, they were almost immediately put on leave, a long-needed break after the events. However, for most of them, it was not the escape from stressful events, but rather a new stress entirely. After you guys recovered for a few days, you eventually heard news of one, well, wild card allowing vis visitors, finally. And as a group, you proceeded to make your way over to the hospital into one of the, well, more well-guarded wings of this hospital. It is more or less a military hospital, and you know how it is. Most of the soldiers will be in a... If you were not a powder counter force, there is no way in hell that you would get in here. However, you're eventually led into the room that is one uh, wild card is in. Wild card, you hear a bunch of people opening the door to your hospital room. A few footsteps come in. Hi, hey guys. What's up? Uh, Did you know that you're not allowed to throw knives in here? I can't believe it, you know? He smiles. I would believe that, yes. <laughs> As you look, his entire arm is gone, leaving nothing to but a bandage almost entirely up to the uh, the shoulder, almost. Like, it's a very small stump. 
Hey, holding up. Eh, tis but a scratch. A scratch? Your arm's off. Oh. Eh, it's fine. His mood leaks into the music. He seems <laughs> cheerful, even though he is missing an arm. <laughs> well, you know what they say. Can't get let a missing arm break, go, get you down. I don't think really anything gets you down, wild card. Yeah, that's not true. Who says that? I don't know. Oh, it's probably the they, and that's what they say. Exactly. So the people in your head. Yeah. He smiles. <sighs> Yeah, wild card. There was no reattaching your arm. <laughs> You've already been br like briefed on that. There's no, there's no reattaching that arm. It was not like a clean rip off or anything like that. It was, it was gone. Violently torn to shreds. Yeah. So uh... I can't believe they couldn't wouldn't let me keep the arm either. Um. Is there anything why would you left want of to it? Keep the arm. Back scratcher, you know. <laughs> uh, um, <laughs> I gotcha. <laughs> oh god, you know, man, you really a... had us for a second there. Yeah. Loses an arm, gets it stuffed, so you have your own back scratcher. <laughs> it's so morbid. <sighs> you make me want to go back to not working and just drinking my life away. Ah, so you quit drinking? Oh, I am curious. Like, all you guys are in civilian clothes. Like, obviously, Wildcard is in some sort of gown, but I'm curious what you guys look like in your day wear. <laughs> I got a gown. Is that just Wildcard just always wears a gown? No. A hospital gown? Uh, he would probably, like, I don't know, honestly. Plaid shirt. Plaid shirt. <laughs> Frazier, Frazier would probably wear be like look like a just a dad. He just has like jeans and a button up shirt. Like a polo. <laughs> <laughs> Dahi probably has the equivalent of an off duty detective sort of thing where he has like a white shirt and a tie, slacks. <laughs> I can see Dahi being one of those people when they go to the beach, they just wear like khaki shorts and then like one of those Hawaiian shirts and nothing else the entire time. <laughs> yes. Amelia would probably just wear a regular t-shirt with some blue jeans. Wildcard feels like a jorts type of person to me. <laughs> yeah. You know what, Dahi, that down, that's what he wears. It's officially decided. <laughs> he wears jorts. They're comfy and easy to wear. Exactly. Especially especially when working on the farm, you know? Yeah, yeah that does make sense. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, somebody wearing jorts while working on a farm is so <laughs> funny to me. <laughs> it's like, like long sleeve, like a uh, plaid shirt, just jorts, and then like a straw sticking out of his mouth. <laughs> oh yeah, definitely. Anywho... The door, you guys hear the door open up, and well, after a few moments, someone pushes through the, uh, the curtains. And it's someone none of you expected to see. Oh. oh. Why are you guys here? Well, um... Why are you here? I had to talk to Wildcard. Y you know he's kind of a member of our squad, right? Yeah. So why would we not be here? Fair point. <sighs> hey man, what's up? He like holds out a file for you. He like begins to like move his arm and is like, oh yeah. And then goes with the other one. This is like a nub going, eh. eh. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> then he grabs it. We heard of, uh... 
I don't know if the hospital has said any of your options. They probably said that you couldn't afford it, etc. But uh, I looked into it for you. Prosthetics are, well, functional. They actually work quite great, but they're expensive. But through this, you can get one through the military and it will pay for it. You won't even be discharged. They'll keep you on. As long as you sign that and agree for me to be the, uh, I guess your engineer in this case, considering there's nobody else in Division B to do it. Hmm. Let me think. Heck yeah! Just signs it. <laughs> Just writes his name over the file. <laughs> yeah. Write, writes it a spade. <laughs> All right, I'll... I'll make efforts to do that. He takes it. Rest awesome. up. The procedure is probably the most pain that you'll ever feel in your life. Oh. Just well, walks out fair, without, without saying anything else. Well, to be fair, I completely passed out when, I, when this fell off, so... I don't know what that felt like. Huh. Robot arm. I wonder if you'll be able to have it, like... I don't know. Like, have a knife hidden in it? That Ooh, would maybe be a awesome. snack compartment. <laughs> hmm. I feel like the snacks would get crushed when I move it. You guys do oh. real realize who's designing this arm, right? It is only then that it sits in for a wild card. Ah, crap. <laughs> well, let's just hope it doesn't explode. I would very much like it not to explode. <laughs> Who to know what Eugene Spitz's plan is? <laughs> So, Maybe so he happened? did it out of the kindness of his heart. You don't know. So what's happened? Uh, did, did we win? I'm assuming that you're all here because we won. <laughs> no, we're in purgatory right now. It's all an illusion. Damn it. I thought I was good enough. No, no. It, it totally died. Blew up into oh. a bunch of chunky pieces. Oh. That must have been very gross. It, it was incredibly gross, yes. Yeah. Like, how, how long did you have to shower for to get a little bit of him out of your hair? Dahi's face just kind of glazes over. <laughs> I don't know how long it took know, for me. I was asleep. We'll never get to use it otherwise. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's true. Uh, I, can't, I can't use my... I don't think the other arm has been removed from my emote. <laughs> yeah, you, you don't have those. I I did not. Uh, you were not here when I mentioned it, but we had uh, artist problems, so we did not have mm. the ability to get you full metal arm. But if okay. wild card appears before, I will make sure to get you dual hands. One with <laughs> I should have just. I know what you're talking about. I should have just done it. The the uh one with no arm, so it's just finger guns, but one finger gun. <laughs> Yeah. Damn it. <laughs> so, so what? What all happened? Because no one's informed me on like anything, basically. Well, you know, besides yeah. this, we yeah, stopped the doctor, saved the town. You know, squad B things. Squad B things. Alright. Oh. Also, um Paul is now on the, the squad. Oh cool. Where, where is he? Getting himself uh, he's, he's going to be. <laughs> what well, he hasn't confirmed, but you know. Uh, we're likable people. Yeah. He fumbled okay. a bit, uh when when we Went, went to go, go save his sister, but he seems like he's capable. Should we mention the farm? Hmm? Did you guys uh, get another farm? <laughs> um... So, I may have told him that it'd be possible to move Jennifer and Pearl to your farm so they could hide away. Oh. If you're okay with that. Yeah, that should be fine. My, my parents are not, like, upset with, like, gifted people, like, at all. Blind card, it hits you. 
You haven't told him you lost your arm yet. Oh, crap. Uh, ooh, that's, ooh, that's gonna be a phone call. Oh. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> gotta explain this, then I gotta tell them that people are coming over. Ugh. I'm gonna Thanks. have some friends come and visit for, um, uh, it's probably years. <laughs> yeah, it's junior high all over again. What happened in junior highs? Many things. Uh, doesn't it always? Yeah. That poor cow. And with that... <laughs> <laughs> time begins to ever uh, march forward. I wanted to do a... A, a thing. Oh, once, go ahead. Once Dahi and Amelia walked out. Alright, that's fine. Eventually, you know... We go poof. Yeah, you go poof. Eventually, after, you know, talking for quite a while, you all three proceed to walk out, but Fraser says that he'll catch up with you guys, and you leave. So, basically, Fraser walks back through the curtain, wild card, after he said goodbye. Alright. Sort of puts his hand on your shoulder. Yeah. You yeah, did boss. good. You did good, kid. His eyes begin to tear up. Um, and he just smiles. Don't cry. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, this is getting <laughs> too. <laughs> this is getting too emotional. Uh, once you get that arm, you're not coming twenty feet near me. Fair enough, sir. <laughs> <laughs> once you, once Fraser leaves, oh, I'm just gonna, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Approval! Yes! <laughs> you did it. You made your captain proud. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Alright. The biggest character arc. <laughs> However, as funny and, well, cheerful as that was in the light of this, the event surrounding it. We go to someone else. Frank Adams, well, is back in his office once more. He types away at a few things and then just kind of looks over at the duck on his table, pokes it for a moment, and then there's a knock on his door and someone walks in. Someone that has been, well, lost in thought for the past few weeks, thinking and trying to understand the events that exactly happened to him. Bembrook, what do you need? Yeah, Pembroke just like, you know, casually walks over to the desk and looks at him. I've been starting to have some memories come back. I see. I know you had them lie to me. Very well. He, like, begins to grit his teeth. Why? I was ordered to. Is that all? <laughs> all you have to say is you were ordered. That's fantastic. What memories do you remember? What exactly events came back to you? I recall being in a, a building turned to ash, nothing remained. William didn't escape, did he? Is 
stood down. He just kind of points you to his chair. He just kind of slowly stands up from his table. I can't tell you a lot. And even if I did, I don't think you would even understand. <laughs> from what we can tell and what we did happen to record via the squads that were waiting on standby, he was turned to ash along with the house itself. So we did. All your squad dying still happened. The devastation still happened. The only difference is that you... You... were fine. He thinks for a moment. Have you heard of the operation that happened five years ago called Operation Phoenix? It doesn't ring a bell. It wouldn't. <clears throat> Any... Just so buried under classifications that you would never see the light of day. But... There's an entire town that simply turned, almost every single individual there turned to ash. Military was sent in, a hundred operatives sent in, one including myself. Only 13 of us made it back. What we found there, we also found on you. Want to know the reason why we lied to you? Because we not... We are not sure what you're capable of. What you can do. <laughs> uh, it saddens me that I actually hear a bit of myself in what you just said. I executed gifted individuals without really knowing their stories. Just knowing that they were a potential threat to us. You realize that we only sent you in when we knew that they were hostile, right? I'm and aware. Far beyond the point of where we are able to capture them. However, were they hostile because they were always hostile? Or did they become it because we were hunting them? Look, we're given orders and we follow it. I don't understand. What are you trying to tell me here, Pembroke? If you're trying to question me, I am only a messenger, as we all are within this facility. No, I understand. Pembuk will, um, Pembuk, Pembrook will begin to stand up. May I let my anger for what William did cloud my judgment for so long? I thought he ruined my life. In actuality, he's the reason why I still remain. He doesn't really say much to that. He just like watches you as you leave. <laughs> I will say one last thing, Adam. I'm going to be honest with you. I am not the type of person that will continue working for this agency when I know that I do not 100% believe in their goals any longer. Agency. 
You know, you of all people should know how this works. You signed up for this job. There's no quitting. I'm aware of how this will end. You realize you're telling your commanding officer that you're about to go against the military, right? I am. He just kind of looks at you. <laughs> you're insane to think that anyone here would let you leave. He just kind of like closes his eyes for a second. You know the consequences if you leave, right? I'm aware. I know Counterforce does not like it when their people go rogue. You're saying Counterforce like you're trying to make us out to be the villains here. Any military organization within the UK would do the same. I know. We are just one of many. You have anything else to say? For what it's worth, I wish you luck. I can't say the same towards you. Because <laughs> whatever you end up I doing, know. I know my men will get killed. I see how you are in the field. He just kind of like shakes his head. Bye, Pembroke. Goodbye, Adams. Madman. <laughs> <laughs> Frank Adams, after he leaves, just kind of lets out all the tension in his body just kind of loosens and he just exhales. Looks down at the duck once more. And just breathes for one moment. It's really worth all this pain. I guess so, uh, if I get to see you once more. Just slowly pokes the duck as it waddles back and forth. Afterwards, as Pembroke makes his way through the facility itself, one Frazier, well, begins to make his way towards, well, Frank Adams, as paperwork needs to be done to, well, approve fully Wild Card's new arm. But in this moment, that does not matter. As he sees Pembroke for the first time since the conclusion of Saint Asaph. Uh, Pembroke. Fraser. Good to see you're doing all right. He kind of like looks down to the ground. Wouldn't say that. Well, you're not dead, and you're not missing an arm, so better than some of us. I guess that's true. I know didn't have a chance to talk, really, back at St. Asaph when we found you. Mind telling me what happened when you disappeared for a little while there? And I went to follow up a lead in the graveyard. I came across a chimera, sentient. And whenever I approached him, I had my hammer at the ready. And he charged, and a fight ensued. And then at the end of it, I put down the potential threat. He once again, like, kind of, like, somewhat looks towards the ground. My options were 
limited. Don't call him a chimera. That was a person. I assume it was Fergus. Do you know that all of them had a sort of video fee to them? And I was unaware of that. Figures, since you lied to me about it just now. What do you mean? I was shown his. You killed him when we had no kill order. You were correct, I did. Why? I was safe to say to subdue him. Uh, yes, him. I took a rather big beating myself, knowing gifted individuals. His recovery rate would be faster than mine. He wasn't gifted. I was unaware of that at that point in time. And even if he wasn't to recover, I had four potential possibilities in my head. Both well, first being that he were to recover and not keep his word and attack. Keep the word of a gifted individual is not normally something I tend to keep or rely on. Rather. The second is that I knew he had potential allies within the town as he rescued others. Uh, as you have told me. Uh, if he were to, or his allies were to attack, there would have been no way in my condition I would, would be able to defend it. Thirdly, there was a chance that, well, those animals that were stalking all over the place were to attack. Once again, I was not in the best position to defend myself. And the target would have escaped. Fourthly, which I believe was the most unlikely of the can or unlikely of them, is that he actually kept his word and did not attack and none of the other things were to occur. The fact that I was captured soon after my execution just points to the fact that the target would have escaped. Emperor, why did you... I did right. oh. Why did you join Counterforce? I joined Counterfo uh, Counterforce in order to help protect the people of the UK. Then, it was a rage that I had against gifted individuals. Something I have come to figure out was a lie. Now, well, soon you may end up hunting me yourself. What's that supposed to mean? Meaning I am done here. I don't know what to believe anymore. But I am done just aimlessly killing. So... When you said it was a lie, you meant a counterforce lie to you? Yes. How so? It was... I was led to believe that... a target that I had hunted down previously... a close friend of mine... ended up killing my squad and escaping. I was the only one that remained alive. It turns out that... My squad did die, but so did my target. Someone I was meant to bring in. He gave his life to save mine. You know they're not going to let you out, but let's just say that 
by some miracle, you leave, and you don't get stopped, what are you going to do? Well, not many options when you're on the run. I'll figure something out. But as for the meantime, I will keep my head low as best as I can. I am... Not exactly sure what I will do. I need to figure things out. But here is not a place where I can do that. Now, uh, if you don't mind, I'm sure my time here is running short. There are other uh, options. It's a bit late for that. <laughs> Well, considering you haven't been stopped and arrested already, it might not be too late. But I told Atoms. Hmm. I'm sure my realization of what has occurred will not be let go. Even if I were to remain... Well, I'm not exactly sure what I am, but I don't think I'm entirely human. I'm sure he'd... Adams might change his mind if he were to... work with a group. Sort of pats him on the shoulder. You know, there might be a few that are a bit more open to non-humans. As he, or as you leave, he, like, looks over, or, you know, yeah, kind of, like, looks over his shoulder. That is a dangerous game you are playing. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm here to drop off some paperwork. Paperwork, even more so. So, Pembroke, are you going to take him up on that mysterious offer? You can, by the way, because that other scene does not happen until much later, you can give it some thought and we can come back to you if you want to do that. Because that's okay. a lot. That's a lot, a lot yeah. of turning. <laughs> so we'll come back to you. Um, unless you've already kind of have made up your mind. No, I need to think about it for a minute. Okay. Uh, the next scene, you could participate on and then decide afterwards. Because that would give you a much more clear of what they're about. If Rager thinks that would be... Yeah, yeah. I have an idea of what I'm going to do if Pembroke is in that scene. I mean, sure. <laughs> I, I don't know what scene it's referring to, but sure. Yeah, it's in. It was on your list. It, yeah, it's been a long Especially day, Fraser. You enter your beautiful apartment. Trash that's been left there since before. You know, going to Saint Asaph's is kind of. There's this lingering smell. Uh. Is that, did I not? Yeah. <laughs> When was the last time I had toast? <laughs> you not sure. But I wouldn't eat that if I was you. You're not sure Probably if that not. black is it being burned or something growing on it. Uh, how did that <laughs> what <laughs> did he move that in here? Uh you had some people deliver it to your house. <laughs> some of the counterforce people came by a day or two ago. Because you're on leave, you can't really move it into, you know, the base yet, so you have to hold it somewhere. And Fraser wouldn't pay money to keep it in storage. He has a whole apartment. Look at all the space. Look at, look at all this space. He sort of does a stretch and walks over to the fridge. And he opens the 
Yeah, you open the fridge and it is pretty much nothing but beer. There's like milk in it. You take it out, you smell it, and you're like, ugh. And then just put it back in and then grab a beer instead. Yeah, he grabs a beer and then he makes his way to his little, his little car and sits in it and <laughs> opens the beer and starts drinking it. You hear a knock on your door. Come in. <laughs> Awesome pit brick, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> you guys nice walk place. in and immediately get hit by a smell. Oh, God. Captain, have you not cleaned this place in a month? Oh, I haven't yes. been here. Smells in like a my month? Jeffrey's barn. Yeah, you look forward, and there's almost no furniture besides, like, a lounge chair and a TV that is on the floor. <laughs> and people ask me why I don't own an apartment. This is why I just drive several hours to and from work. That seems inefficient. There's beers in the fridge. I don't drink, sir. Ah, uh, well, at least it'll kill my sense of smell. Uh, I've disappeared for a little bit. I had to remove your arm, don't worry about it. <laughs> 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 Hey guys, I got my arm. Ah! He was just faking it. He just, it keeps getting placed on. He keeps ripping it off at every scene. He's faking it. I got you guys. Uh -huh. You guys know that smell of beer that's just kind of like been sitting out for a while? It's like days. Yeah. That's yeah. kind of has that smell. You see a lot of cans and empty bottles around. That's upsetting. I don't have a no. problem. You have a problem. Uh, this is kind of maybe a few of these will make the smell go away. Sir, why do you have a car in here? Oh, um, that's my drink car. Don't Damn tell it. me you brought that. <laughs> uh huh. Da, he spits out what he was drinking. <laughs> Guys, just let you know, he's just he's just declared his dream car so his memory evolves. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have that prepped because, you know, I didn't expect that to happen, but, you know, <laughs> you now have a new memory that's based on those toy cars that outside, like, grocery stores that you can put quarters in. <laughs> You know, I've been, uh, you know, I haven't had the chance since saying ASAP, but, uh, been planning on, you know, upgrading it a bit, specking it out. Nice, nice. I'm gonna make it actually it's drivable. Oh. Car? <laughs> make it highway safe, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that reminds me of, like, before I had a car, uh, or was even allowed to drive, I just kind of rode the lawnmower to and from the grocery store. Uh, this this toast is kind of nasty. Hold on, let me throw this away. Ah, there we go, nice and clean. Yeah. Yeah, that's <laughs> not the word I would describe this place here. All due respect. Ah. You didn't think of cleaning up before we got here. I got here like not even two minutes before you guys did. You guys have been on lead for like a week at this point, so uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Something does not add up. Are you saying you haven't been staying in your apartment this entire time? Um. Well, you remember, he did drag one of the cults into the barracks into the little office he had there. If he's just been sleeping there too, I mean, probably, ah. Uh. It's kind of convenient in the office. Anyways, can you hand me one of those? Oh yeah, here you go. And uh, let me see if I can't uh, do something about the smell. Which one of these is your bathroom? The, the one at the top, I think. Okay. <laughs> I, I'm literally activating chain reaction to find like Febreze and bleach. Okay, that's fine. Is this just going to turn into clean Fraser's apartment? 
but... I have a feeling that's where it's headed. Have you ever had those? Like, you enter somebody's home and it's so nasty yeah. that you're like, oh, I, <laughs> I have to clean. I can't... I, ah. <laughs> like, you have that mental struggle. Also, I just kind of want to show off this room because this is funny to me. There's just a bed <laughs> shoved in the corner. And then it's not even against the wall. It's That's just in the center of the room. Stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wait, you just, just need to fill up space. So you're a horrible, horrible, horrible man, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> You're a bloody psychopath. Sit down at the table with a beer in his hand and take a sip out of it. Well, Kurt's uh. like trying to lean like on the counter but he's struggling a bit <laughs> oh yeah wildcard you have not been able to return to your farm as of yet you were you know you eventually were allowed out of the hospital and you've been primarily at the base preparing for surgery yeah. as they have to put a metal basically thing on the end of it where you can legitimately snap it into your nerve it's it's a painful process don't worry about it yeah can i really take it off though out of curiosity you can take off the metal arm, but there'll always be this metal part at the end. That is just how it yeah, functions. Yeah, that's so, what I meant. You can always I, pop off your metal arm. When I, I, have a bit, I have a bit idea. <laughs> yeah. Oh, gosh. So, as you Febreze the hell out of this room and, you know, everything, everything begins to, well, get a little bit more serious as some of you may question why you were told to pick up Pembroke. As he's not a part of Squad B right now. And the true reason why you have been drawn together by your captain will now be discussed. Oh, this lock card just gonna chill out over there. Hey, there's only four seats. That's fair. It's almost like one of you is not supposed to be here. <laughs> it's fine. Or limited assets. <laughs> okay, I don't go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This is uh, f up to you, Fraser. Take it away. <sighs> okay. First of all, did anyone bring anything that was given to them by Counterforce? Just to confirm. Uh, no, I'm left just... all that stuff at the barracks. Uh, I don't think I've been allowed to have it on me for a while. I definitely would not be carrying my stuff with me. Yeah, it's at the barracks. <sighs> okay, good. Secondly, I need to know that anything said in this room right now doesn't leave this room. He specifically looks Pembroke in the eyes. I don't worry, I'm great at keeping secrets. You are aware of what I told you, right? I'm just making sure. I know these three a lot more than I know you. Yes, but why would I tell anyone anything? In the current situation I'm in. What's you did tell Fraser everything. <laughs> but yeah, but why would I say, like, I know, you know, I know what I, I mean. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't expect you to go and say anything to Counterforce considering the whole, you know, situation, but I'm just making sure. No, your secret's safe with me. Anyone else feel like snitching? It just gets Pembroke just kind of eyes wild card. <laughs> he, he waves with his one hand. He waves his knob and goes, oh, and then puts his other hand up. <laughs> yeah. I keep forgetting. I'm so used to waving with the other hand, you know? River to then just eyes Fraser <laughs> after that response. <sighs> it's a risk we're going to have to take. I'm great at keeping secrets, don't worry. I think it'll be fine. Yeah. Well, sort of save my life. I have no choice but to trust him. <laughs> well, that's kind of my job, sir. <sighs> Anyways. After St. Asaph, and I guess during as well, started to get a feeling about Counterforce. I don't know about you all, but something's off about it. Yeah, a bit. 
Definitely a bit of things, yes. Now, I'm not saying I'm gonna pull a Pembroke and run away. And I don't think anyone else here should either. Hey, what's going on? <laughs> he looks at Pembroke. <laughs> Nothing, it's an inside joke. Yes, oh, okay. it's a joke. Eyes down, Frazier again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, I believe you. But I don't think we should be entirely trusting of them. Basically, what I'm suggesting is that you all, well, excluding Pembroke, it's kind of up in the air right now, are loyal to me and loyal to each other, and that's it. Yeah, alright. Yeah, that's pretty easy to agree to. Yeah, fair enough. And Pembroke, just listen to the rest of this conversation. You can make your choice after. I still think that we work under counterforce. It'd be too big of a step to just immediately leave or work for any other party. I think what we mainly need to do is scope things out in a way. Figure out exactly what it is going on, but keep things under the radar. Should we be like arrested if we left anyway? Yes. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, one hundred percent. The court martial too, probably uh, thrown in jail, and you know the whole nine yards. I mean, do you know what they do with guys with one arm in jail? It's not great. What do they do with guys with one arms in jail? Don't <laughs> answer that. They push them over on like the side they don't have an arm, so it's hard, just more difficult to get up. Well, <sighs> yes. That's not okay, the answer I, I was expecting. Know. What were you expecting? I don't know, something more dark. Uh, what have I ever said anything that dark? Dark from him? I mean, I haven't really talked to him that much, but I can already tell he's not the dark type. Nah, not really. Oh my god, we're never gonna get anything done. <laughs> Isn't that kind of the point? <sighs> if anyone wants to chime in with, you know, what they think we should do. So, like, are we gonna call ourselves something different, like Counter Counter Force? We're not having a name. We are Squad B. Division BBF. Yeah. Step force. Well, <laughs> if there's anything we've seen from our most latest, you know, debacle, there are certainly many gifted individuals out there, but there are many different kinds, and there are definitely many different types of people, too. Alright, I think. You know, as we can tell from what they tried to do with Charlotte, that uh, Counterforce is sort of has a black and white vision on Gifted. Wait, what happened to Charlotte? <laughs> well, they tried to arrest oh. her and put her away oh, like okay. she was a Gifted individual, which. Oh, yeah, Fraser, you wasn't. very much. Well, the two people that were in charge of putting her and locking her up were very much yelled at. Oh, yeah. Uh, we, we had to lock her up, and uh, somehow she managed to escape. <laughs> the darndest thing. I was glad it wasn't me getting yelled at this time. <laughs> I'm sure it was an accident. Oh, entirely. Yep, it sure was. Yeah, there was this one time, um, never mind, it's, it's fine. <laughs> Wild card, if it's not important to this overall conversation. <laughs> yeah, I got it, got it, sir. 
Okay. I will say what you are proposing, as I stated before, is dangerous. If anyone with outside a counterforce finds proof of you letting people go or potential sympathizer with gifted individuals, the government will not take kindly upon that. I am fully aware. That's why we're starting slow. Keeping our heads low, just looking for information more than trying to help people out. We still work for counterforce. We still go after a gifted individual. Individuals. Hey, and if there's any uh, bad apples in the bunch, it's probably best we're going after them anyway. Yeah, like that, that angel guy you told me about. Yeah, he he straight up committed several murders, so he's he's right where he belongs. There was an angel guy? Well, he kind of had devil horns and angel wings. We met him in the church. Me and, uh, well, our potentially new squad member in the future uh, took him down. Raises an eyebrow to that. Not you. Uh, the uh, the officer that was well, there. What was his name? Obviously, Lawrence. not me. Hmm. He did seem capable, at least. Oh yeah, he was doing pretty good. Flashbacks to him like going down like a beast and throwing people. <laughs> <laughs> you know you're capable too Pembroke you could help us out a lot and like I said you won't be necessarily working for counterforce you'd only be loyal to us <clears throat> I'm not entirely sure I am willing to do anything under the counterforce banner even though I'm technically not working for them I'd be loyal to you, who I don't know anything about. Come on, man. I thought we had a bonding moment in the junkyard. You mean when you played on that toy car, which you brought with you? <laughs> he just looks back at it. <laughs> I mean, it looks really nice. You know, there are two seats. <laughs> <laughs> Sir. All right, that, that's my favorite line of all in <laughs> I believe I would need several more of these. He raises his beard before I'd get in that car. In general. Look, I obviously can't force you to join us, but I'm only saying that trying to straight up leave. Counterforce is not going to go over well for you. And surely you want, like, some answers. I mean, there's obviously got to be someone above Frank Adams that is ordering him to lie to you. There was. Apparently, my situation, or what they found on me, in me. I not, don't really quite understand. It was also... It also occurred in a different operation. I'm not the first... to encounter something like this. Well, I know it's a slow start, what we're doing, but... eventually, we can get to the point where we can stop it. Hey, uh, Fraser, do you want me to explain the power structure of Counterforce that you know? And probably, uh, you're the highest position in the room, so I can explain to you what and who you know. Yeah. It's around. So currently, as it stands, there's two divisions of Counterforce. One that is Division A, that is fully functioning under the leadership of of uh, the same person that has basically your title currently, but have many more people under them, Kyra Smith. You are aware that Kyra Smith was in the hospital after the events of the fall. Fall. So she is the 
well, what I would say is the direct person that um, Frank Adams is under. Frank Adams is legitimately the equivalent <laughs> of Dahi or Amelia, a part of his group. He is the, like like Frank Adams uh, talked to you about before, Frazier, you basically can decide a group of, like, a squad, your squad, that is the people that you trust the most, that you delegate to everything else. Unfortunately for you, you only had enough people to not even form a proper squad because you only had four. Um, uh, so, with that, from there, basically, both you and Reed, uh, both those divisions are under the same kind of branch, right? They're trying to build this into a slowly building it into the equivalent of like an army, right? Yeah. Um, above that, the person that is over it all, basically the director of this, I think you know who it is. Yeah. It's in your back. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's in your stuff. <laughs> um, and at this point, you probably have figured out who it is. It's just, like, just knowing what position that you're in. Yeah, you're under Frank Adams until Frank Adams to get the okay for you to fully run over thing because you're currently being watched, right? Um guided by him so the two people that it would be higher than him is kyra smith the one that if you want to mention you can or um there's probably a few other people up the line because that's a typically have how those systems work but the two that you do know would be kyra smith and um yeah i'm not going to reveal that that's up to you to reveal because that's a that's big living worlds things to deal with. <laughs> Our main issue is finding out where the secrecy starts and ends. Because it could be whatever happens under Division A could be even higher up than that. We're just going to have to start slow and build our way up, finding out info. Pembert kind of like nods to that. Well, even if I were to join, I'm not there as we discussed before. I'm not sure they would just let me realizing what happened slide or what I am slide. If anything, I, they would be keeping a very close eye on me. Let's see here. Can I potentially draw upon it? Yeah. All right. And... Uh, I need to quickly grab a token. Okay. Uh, I'm not going to have you roll for it. I'm just going to have it mm -hmm. uh, do it. So it's basically you're drawing an inner power, which is, you know, you can you can describe how you attempt to do this. That's for the group. If you, you want to make that known or says it appear, that's up to you. <laughs> uh, he just, he, after he says that, he um, just sort of like, sits there and tries to focus. Um, actually, I'm not even sure it really causes that. Unless it's just rage. You're not sure? Okay. I just, you know, you see him close his eyes and he seems to be trying to focus. As you kind of focus, thinking about those memories, those weird, foggy dreams of yours where you felt like you talked directly towards your deceased friend. Uh, you guys, uh, this is going to look weird because I don't have just his default one without his hammer, but uh, I only have yelling him because it would make sense when this happened. You get to see some of his blood veins almost begin to glow orange a little bit, very subtly and slightly. And then it just kind of drifts back. You're not sure if you did anything, really, uh, Pembroke. <sighs> Ooh. Look at my hammer. I mean the the yeah. There yeah. we go. <laughs> I guess it didn't work. That's a neat party trick. Your, your veins turned orange. Was that your gift? Are you a gifted person? Did you turn your veins orange? I don't know what I am. I mean that's a pretty cool power. <laughs> Look. You'd be gone already if they didn't see use in you. They may be scared of gifted people, but like I said, you have use. I'm sure 
sure I can convince Frank Adams that I can keep an eye on you. Plus, if you are under Division B, if they're so focused on you, they may forget to keep an eye on us. So use me as a tool. A distraction. Hmm. If you want to look at it that way. But either way, like I said, we're loyal to each other. Any information we find, you'll know too. It just comes with being what you are. The distraction thing, I mean. You can also think of it as a way of getting back at Counterforce. <laughs> oh, that's kind of like Look, if you're there, we don't have to put Eugene Spence in charge of dealing with <laughs> his arm. <laughs> oh, yeah, you could make him an arm that has an elemental burst thing on it. You make, my arm. <laughs> you make my arm shoot fire? <clears throat> I have not accepted yet. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but like, could you? Theoretically. Theoretically. Probably. However, I could not limit or discount the potential damage to, well, you. And what Amelia said is true. I don't know if you're the revenge type of person, but if you are, then this is a good opportunity rather than trying to run away and getting arrested. Uh, well, I guess it would still be nice to have some counterforce resources. And it would be nice to work with Eugene again. He's not all that bad. Pembroke will stand up. And walk over. To Frazier. Extend his hand out. Oh, sorry. God, I moved you. <laughs> <laughs> Frazier will shake his hand. Uh, now, the rest of the... He, like, turns to look at everyone else. Have they heard about our discussion? I've been in the hospital for, like, several weeks. Yeah, not in the least. Yeah, they've basically That's only heard. They weren't willing to kill me. Wildcard, you probably have been debriefed at this point. Oh. Oh, yeah, that, does, that does remind me of something. <laughs> It'll slap me with the one good hand. Rise of the gonna... nub first. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, he is going to punch you in the face. <laughs> you know, like, regardless of how, like, kind of scrawny wild card is, like, he <laughs> punches you and you don't expect it at all because you, like, finish shaking your hand and you see him walk up and you're like, what does he want? And then you just get decked in the face and just fall to the ground. Sorry, the amount of force. <laughs> uh, we we don't we don't murder people unless we need, have good reason to. He smiles and then walks back. <laughs> oh yeah, if you ever do nice. that again, you're getting in the car with me. Really, that's the punishment. <laughs> Why well, well, I mean, is that? That's a fairly good punishment. But at the same time, it also terrifies me. I was obviously joking. The punishment would be worse than that. Oh, thank God. <laughs> thank God. Wait, hold on. Actually, that's a positive. <laughs> Don't worry, sir. Oh, I'll get in the car with you. Everyone turns to the camera and smiles as a laugh. <laughs> as I said, I do not aim to kill pointlessly. My rage is somewhat subdued yeah i just needed to get that out of my system you know that is fair <laughs> right. he looks at the other two anyone else <laughs> no no he, he he got you pretty good 
Hey Amelia, how about you hit him in the balls with your gun? Frazier. Sorry, just... That's oddly specific, sir. <laughs> that is yeah. very strange and specific. Past experiences. Amelia what? just looks down at the ground. <laughs> what? Avoid all eye contact. Just looking at her. Just confused. Activate your memory, does this disappear? <laughs> <laughs> Jump out window. Um, but with that, with a new member added to Counter Forces ranking, Frazier, after this meeting, eventually comes to a close, and each and every member heads back to their individual living places in London. Besides Wildcard, he has to go back to base. And Pembroke. Now I think about it. They're gonna bunk. Fraser leaves to go meet someone. Someone that a week ago slid slid a uh, a piece of paper in his pocket to meet him at a location. One that, as he enters, he begins to immediately realize <laughs> and recognize where he is. You walk in, it's very early on the day, one where the bars should probably be closed. Kind of walk in, this old man that's just sitting there drinking a glass of water. Oh... Uh, we're close. He turns around. Never. Don't worry about it. Uh, sit down. I'll, I'll give you a drink. Yeah. Thanks. You see him turn the open sign to closed on the door. Interesting. As he locks it. Anything in particular? Uh... You know, last time I was here, I was unemployed, but I've gotten paid since then. Hmm. I want some top shelf stuff. Did you, did you forget where... I mean, we're kind of a low-end uh, place. I'll check if I have anything in the back. With that, he's just kind of sit in this empty bar, about to very much day drink. <laughs> As someone begins to approach and just sits next to you. Come here often. Used to come here a little too often. <laughs> What a coincidence. The owner owed me a favor or two. You don't have to worry about me being out in public. There's nobody here that can watch us. Nor any cameras in this place. I mm. doubt it's even up to code. Uh, probably not. I assume that they're looking for me. On some sort of wanted list. Uh, yeah. They're a little bit angry that we let you go. Your squad has some balls. This is simply let me leave like that. I don't know if you were even aware that it was both. What were their names? The red-headed one? The clumsy one? They accidentally left the door unlocked for me. Hmm. How careless of them. But what can you expect from Division B? She kind of slowly taps her kind of claws on the, uh, the bar itself. 
I imagine your plan is not to capture me now. Had a change of heart. Well, I keep to my word. You did do that. You know, I was planning on leaving in that whole shabakal within his facility. I wouldn't have blamed you, to be honest. I also was planning on you using this information as my last bit of leverage if you ended up going against our deal. But lucky for you, I have had a change of heart. Ugh. She seems, like, disgusted by her saying that. I told Francis to meet us. She just kind of slowly slides over a piece of paper. There. Two weeks from St. Asaph, which would be about a week by now. That's the time. If he hasn't got himself caught or something else has horribly happened, he should be there with the girl. Thank you. You helped out a lot. She just kind of rolls her eye to that. I caught myself. Ha! <laughs> so what is your plan from this point on? Going to continue to work at that counterforce? Capturing more like me? Yeah. Don't really see any reason to stop. Worked out well in St. Asa. It sounds what you call well. <laughs> she just kind of like smirks at that, like kind of like not laughing out loud, but clearly like. <sighs> well, I said I was working at Counterforce, not for them. Oh. You have more balls than I originally thought. Going against a government agency. Or a military one. I'm not fully sure how you guys function. Uh, I wouldn't go as far as saying we're working against them. Just... Working for ourselves. That is something I can get behind. Kind of smirks at that. You know, she's just yeah. Go ahead. It'd be nice to have some eye, eye and ears on the outside. <laughs> <laughs> that was entirely a character. She just gives you a look, <laughs> like <sighs> like pain in her soul, and then she just rolls her eyes. <sighs> I, I, I did it there, I. <laughs> That's a nightmare. <sighs> you realize you're asking me to basically put my life on the line twice, more or less. Do you think I have a string of connections outside St. Asaph? I do not. The only reason why the man of this bar is doing me a favor is I returned his son's body to him. I don't expect died at Saint Asaph. I don't expect you to actively do anything. But inherently being on the run, you're gonna meet some people that might know some things. He thinks very hard about this. Are you attempting to make some plays within this world? Only a week ago, you were just... so willing to let the world go by. I could tell by the breath of the alcohol in your... when you spoke to me the first time. Something has changed. She kind of smirks at that. <sighs> 
guess I had a... Something has changed with me, too. I, uh... Guess we both had a change of heart. <laughs> Sorry, that was terrible. You're making my heart bleed every time you say that. Please, just... Ugh. <laughs> wow, I'm flattered. Don't let it get to your head. She reaches into her pocket. Lays a phone on the counter. It's a burner. It has one number in it. She kind of shows another phone. This has the number attached to it. I'm going to be honest, I've already met with Battery. The girl is fine. I was going to give this to him when I meet him later today. But I guess it can go to you instead. Thank you. Ugh. <laughs> 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 she literally is a sign of disgust when you say that. I will make it clear I'm not your friend. I don't think in any world that we could be friends. Not the one that we find ourselves in. So no hard feelings if I go against you, stab you in the back. Or if you do it the same to me. Deal. Enjoy your drink, Fraser. I'm sure he's found something delightful on the top shelf for you. See you around, Charlotte. She slowly exits, heading to the back as the old man slowly walks. Um, I found some like whiskey. It's like I don't know, like six years old. Uh, he <laughs> wait does he have it out with him or is he just yeah he's holding the bottle it's like it's like a quarter of it remains he just Corey just reaches into his pocket and like tosses loose money onto the counter and then grabs the bottle and walks out hey ah perfect we in a very different location in the heart of London itself, we find two individuals. One who is, well... Luck is getting the best of them. As we hone in on the great Royal Gambit Casino. All the way up here. Dahi, you've been <laughs> using these four individual machines going down the line, and every time you've basically pulled it, it has just given you pretty much maximum coins. Tokens. You started off by, I don't know, 20 bucks worth. Spending 20, you know, these are 10 bucks little slots moving from the 10 buck to the 100 to the 1,000 dollar tokens. It's Pulling in the chain. Next to you remains three big buckets overflowing with casino tokens. Amelia, you've been here more or less. Uh, you're starting to get a sense that he might get in trouble with the amount of coins that he has racked up. You've never in your life has ever seen anybody win this much at a casino before. Slots alone. <laughs> Come on, one more spin. Let's see what else you got in ya. Uh, Dahi, I, I don't think a casinos take kindly to this kind of winning. What are you talking about? I've only been at these four particular machine. Hold on. Is the third pot filled up yet? You pull the lever as you're talking. It lands on a seven, another seven, and then one more seven as tokens begin to flood out of the bottom. Ah, there we go. That should fill up this last little pot of gold. 
And with that, the cheerfulness gets interrupted as this staff door opens up and two people walk out. Ugh. Sir, we're going to have to ask you to come with us. Oh, have I won a little too much? Oh, darn, I was having such a great time, too. You can leave the tokens with this miss here, but you need to, you need to come with us. All right, all right. Hasn't been the first time this has happened, so I know the drill. No, they it's they not... look at both each other and then look back at you like... Uh... Well, what can it... I say? My luck has gotten me banned from more casinos than I would like to, to admit to. They just kind of shake their head. Come on. One of them grabs your arm, the other one grabs the other arm, and kind of leads you down the staff way. As, well, Dahi, in this process, becomes banned from every Royal Gambit casino within London. In this process, he... The amount of money that he earned was a lot. An undeterminable amount of money that... Well, instead of just sitting in the riches, he began to use them to open off-the-record safe houses across the UK. The purpose of which is yet to be determined. We make our way after the meeting within Fraser's apartment. The process of getting Pembroke to join Squad B was actually surprisingly easy at hand. It seems that Counterforce, through their investigations, found the evidence to basically prove that he broke protocol, thus sh shifting him to the dumpster that is known as Division B <laughs> was surprisingly easy. I mean, the last thing he did tell them was he was going to leave, and now it's just a shift to Squad B. But with him now being slotted in the R&D department of Division B, you found yourself on your first day, back before any of the other members of Division B, walking in to a lab. I hope you're ready for the pain that you're about to endure. He, like, turns around in his chair. Oh. You're the wrong person. What Not who I expected about? to see. Wild Card's going through the, um, experimental prosthetic program. Hmm. I was somewhat aware of that. He asked me if I could work on it to allow him to shoot flames out of his arm. You're going to trust someone like him with canisters? Mm, probably not. I, I mean, you could make it internal where he has no choice or decision about it. But I'm not sure about the whole him shooting fire. I would be concerned for... Well, mainly his own safety. Maybe uh, that's something we discussed after he actually gets used to the weight of his arm. That will be something you will have to grow accustomed to, yes. And you uh, better get used to seeing me around here more often. Seems like you were scraped in the dumpster as well. Welcome. Better than the alternative. He just shrugs. But I will say it's good to be back in R&D. Fair warning, it's nothing like it was before. 
we have basically no funding and no assignments, so you basically get to do whatever you want. Raises an eyebrow. Hmm. Well then. Keep the keep all the equipment up to code for Division B, which is not hard because there's only four of them. And then if they need any assistance on the field, we are called in. Hence why I was at St. Asa. Hmm. I was somewhat surprised to see you there. He just shrugs. Hmm. Don't know why they didn't call any of Division A's R&D. Maybe they were just testing me or something. I don't know. Well, I was the one I believe they could spare at the moment, or were willing to spare. You know, there's three other operations going on during that time. Mm, yes. Three operations at once. St. Dave South. Hunting down two others. Something about a murder up north. I don't know. He just scratches the back of his head. <laughs> it doesn't really concern us, does it? No. Well, have you been working on any more experiments since the last time we worked together? A thing there every now and then, but nothing major. Hmm. However, considering that we have no current assignments, we both happen to be on the same R&D department again. I think it's about time to dust off an old project. Ah, uh, I had a feeling you wouldn't just give up on that. It's my life's work, after all. <laughs> he kind of, like, walks over to look at, you know, kind of, like, refresh at the files, like, cracks his knuckles. A lot of what he's been like, doing is running, like, simulations and stuff. Like, he's continued to work on it, but he's not made anything yeah. physical. Yeah, he just sort of like, you know, stretches out of his hands or whatnot and goes, All right, where do we start? Well, before he can even answer, someone walks into the door. Boop! Hey, Wildcard. Hey, what's up? Today uh. is the day that you get... You've already went through the surgery where you basically have this like metal attachment to the stump now that looks like there's a hole that almost goes into your arm where you basically can put something, twist it, and snap it into place, right? Um, that was pretty painful, but from not as painful as it getting ripped off, surprisingly. Yeah. You were under for most of it. You don't know what Man. he was talking about. It was weird. Yeah. Man. It's kind of weird having a hole in my arm kind of thing, you know? And again, my whole arm is just kind of gone. What you guys looking at? He, like, turns to you, Pembroke, and then to Wildcard. I guess that's where we start. Oh, yes. Is, uh, wild arm? What? Wild arm? <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> All right, sit down. Hard something. He like right, slowly I, gets up. Where should I sit? He just shrugs. Doesn't matter. Okay. He's ruffling around in a box <laughs> in the back. Preferably not on any of our supplies. Hey, is any of your supplies over here? Kind of just sitting in a chair. No. All right. Have you ever had... <laughs> he kind of looks you up and down. Hmm. 
Are you you're used to extremely heavy things? Uh, I can lift a cow up, yeah. What? Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> I, it, it can only, it's only for a little bit. It's, it's, it's more wrestling than fully lifting it up, but I can lift it up a bit. Shush. 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 Okay. Wild card okay. secretly has just been holding back his true power. Yeah. Just <laughs> lifting up an entire cow with one arm. <laughs> yeah. Explosive arrows. <laughs> Anything that you guys require, you can keep uh, from saying any stuff. Unless it was, like, super, like, evidence to something that, you know, that it was clear that you have, but none of you really have that. The bow is just something you found. So, yes, you can go full, like, Hawkeye in the future if you want to with <laughs> Amelia. He dissipates being a sniper and just goes Hawkeye. He kind of comes back holding a very simplistic looking metal arm. Ooh. So, as R&D, um, it'll be considered your engineers from this point on. Okay. Most of the time, it, anybody that gets these has to have some sort of at least weekly maintenance on it. This arm is simple. Nothing Nothing but something for you to get used to the weight. And then after you tell us what your specifications are and what we want to test, we can we can create an arm uniquely to you with whatever gadgets that you want on it. All right. I like where this is going. Hmm. He walks up. Uh, remain still as much as you can. Okay. Finbrook, can you hold him down? On it. What? <laughs> <laughs> you just feel Pembroke's arms, just like her hands go on you and like hold you down to the chair. <laughs> oh, I've been held down now. He shoves in the metal arm, it's kind of like, um... This pointed tip almost goes into that like slot it is, and you feel it. It feels like needles all over your entire body. Whoa. This excruciating pain. And then he twists it, and then you hear a snap, and it feels like all your bones are breaking. Oh, sweet Mother Teresa, it's on a Sunday. Oh my. Oh. He lasted longer than I thought he was going to. I honestly didn't think he would last the insertion. Ah! He just wakes up screaming. <laughs> Welcome back. It feels fine now. It, it feels so, it very much is, it's like, you know, those times that you take, you try to get all the groceries in one go and you have like, tin bags in one arm and you're like leaning to the side it kind of feels like that so it's with your arm feeling limp you can All feel right. with it like you can feel the pressure but it doesn't feel like skin or pain you won't be able to feel pain in the arm but you can very much feel when someone's touching the arm itself or you're touching with the hand it's it's very weird Ooh, this is strange because it's moving the arm around It'll probably take a few weeks for you to get used to that, and then we'll figure out something new. All right. Just make sure that you keep your back straight and aligned with your shoulders, because if you just keep it to the side a hunch, it's it's not going to be great. You got it. Hey, I can uh, I can do this now. You don't have it on there. I don't have a. All right. Just pretend he's doing it. <laughs> He doing... shoots finger guns at you. Yeah. Ah, oh, I miss doing that. Uh, you are a weird one. I take that as a compliment. <laughs> take it as you will. As a compliment. <laughs> okay. 
All right. And with that, as the rest of Squad B enjoys their, well, long needed rest, these three never stopped going. As wildcard needing maintenance, etc. He remains alone. Well, not alone anymore. With one Pembroke. In the Squad B barracks. Uh, Pembroke might not be around for long. <laughs> <laughs> Regardless of the, the breaks that they found himself, Dahi and Amelia, you were both invited back to the barracks for something important by one wild card. The events of which led to, well, where you find yourself now. Wild card, you can explain why there is two drugs on the counter and a deck of cards in front of you. <laughs> Welcome, my competitor. I believe you were to acquire these. He kind of shows off the cards. The same oh, you're calling the bad one. <laughs> Indeed. However, I did propose, propose a challenge. A gamble, yeah. if you will. Hey, what would that be? The most grueling challenge of them all. A drinking competition. I could have sworn not long ago you said you don't drink. I don't. This is not a normal drinking competition, you see. Not one of alcohol, but of water. Water. But not just any water. Hotel water from the sink. From one hotel. You see, Wildcard had this planned. Before you guys even left <laughs> the base itself. He filled up from those dirty sinks two jugs of water. <laughs> after a long process of trying to figure out where they ended up after the entire events of, you know, the, the bus getting destroyed, the vehicles getting destroyed, everything getting destroyed, he eventually paid off a few people and found it in storage. But it remains here, nevertheless. Two jugs of Evelyn's Grotto's ho motel water I I didn't realize he could be this evil <laughs> I'm just glad he God. found someone else to talk to you love my conversations no I don't really don't. don't I do not <laughs> I had to take his arm away again <laughs> <laughs> Well, in that case, we are going to have to get right to it, then. Indeed. First right. one to not throw up. All right. Four to two checks. <laughs> yes, you both take a single glass. Pour from your drug. Whoever finishes the jug first, or whoever, I guess, vomits first in this case, too. Ass goes down and wins the deck of cards that was found. Indeed. Both of you give me four to two checks. Oh gosh. The DC is eight for the first one. Also, give me two D two D fours there. You have luck. You can you can cheat the system, Dahi. Oh I could, God. but that would be very honorable. The guy well, you didn't need to. Thrash, Thrash has luck points. <gasps> Surprise. Turn of events. <laughs> Both <laughs> of you are able to hold down. It almost comes up. Like, it tastes fine, but there's something about it, Dahi, where your body is just like, this needs to get out of my body immediately. Wad card looks fine. Just water. On to the oh. next quarter two. The DC has raised the tin. All right. 
The next one goes down without a hatch. You're getting used to it. It's almost like your body's building an immunity. It is raised to 12 now. Ooh. You've rolled three 15s. What is happening? <laughs> oh, no. That is the breaking point, clearly. Yeah, there's something. So you can fill it in your stomach now. It was fine for a little bit, but after three cups, it's not it's not working out for both of you. But you still are able to hold it down. It is raised once more to 14. Roll for me. <laughs> yeah, this is how I expected it to go. <laughs> See, I didn't need to use luck points to cheat. We dueled honorably. You have natural luck. Yeah. Hold on, I'm... I'm trying to see if you, you have anything that you can use to help you. Let me die. Clarity. <laughs> yeah, you have a sense of clarity as he projectile vomits all over the cards and you die. <laughs> There's an explosion of water and stomach acid. It's disgusting. <laughs> Amelia dives out of the way. Pembroke watches from above. Wow. Just sipping on a beer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, that. I guess that means I win. I don't feel like I really won. Ew. Hey, it's your guys' theme. Good job. Lowcar well, just falls on the ground. <laughs> oh, we might need to call the medic in to get him something. Uh. That'd be something. Hey, Dahi, nice. roll me another fortitude check. Oh, God, <laughs> water's not supposed to be chunky. Uh, did it roll? Is that high enough? No, it's a 16. <laughs> nope. Yeah, it's just the smell of the vomit on you, the water uses projectile over. It's like a fountain going and just covering him while he's laying on the ground. Uh I'm gonna go get somebody. <laughs> Please do. <laughs> Pembroke is going to, uh, you know, just examine good old wild card. Just see if he's he's gonna be all right. He's fine. He's fine. He's just stomach ache, probably. <laughs> You'll live. It still hurts. Oh, whose fault was it to drink this disgustingness? He looks over it. Uh, die. Yeah, it wasn't so bad the first few, but then the water started getting chunky. How does it even do that? <laughs> oh, no. Pembroke just knocks back his beard to take one large gulp, and then he just looks down and goes, Y'all are idiots. As, well, after that fiasco and the recovery of um, horrible stomach pains, two people find themselves heading to receive one Pearl Warren. To their surprise, the location is a graveyard. One of much more massive size than the other one that they got familiar with at the place of St. Asaph. The one that is much more massive within London itself. You both walked, um... Made your way here and, well, have made it to the one of the mini gates of this large graveyard. Oh. 
I wasn't expecting Dahi. Are you kidding? I need to make sure that Electric Kid is doing all right. We kind of made a promise. I guess that makes sense. You see, there, there's, you can see a few people off. It's fairly quiet, but you see his bright yellow hair is, you know, it's recognizable from afar. You don't have to walk all the way around. There's no graves around the street, so you can walk through it. No. Yeah, I don't want to be disrespectful, you know. That's the way we end this, is just stomping on graves. <laughs> stomping on graves. All through graves. As you both approach, you see him looking to two fresh graves in front of him. New. He just kind of looks at them. Most solemnly. You both kind of approach, walk up towards him, and he's just... I imagine you look at the graves itself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll put you up this way so, so you're next to him. Two graves lie here. One for Fyodora Valavolv and another one for Dr. Valavolv. It wasn't my idea. It was P's idea. And I, um... Whatever... Whatever she is, is not... Theodora. So I... Wanted to lay them both to rest. And I know... You might be thinking that the doctor... Doesn't deserve to be laid to rest after everything he did, but... He was a good man once. He was like me. Would have done anything for her. He did a lot for me. My mom passed. I was only 13 and he offered me a place to live. A second chance. I had to honor that in some way. Oops. Ignore that. This grave isn't for the doctor we knew. It's for the one that you knew. Yeah. It's, um... I guess it's time to move on. He just kind of nods. To almost to himself. Kind of turns back with a smile on my, his face. If you're looking for Pearl, um, she, he, he looks over, just kind of gestures further down the road as you see two people approaching. A silent spirit holding a smiling child. An orthopog. I only have one. <laughs> well, it looks like she's looking better. I will say, um, if he can't speak, I don't know why. And Pearl hasn't said a word since. Since we found her. But they seem to be getting along. Well, that's good. Would you, um... Would you mind giving him a moment to say goodbye? Of course. <laughs> Yeah.
in this as you both kind of stand there waiting this spirit this glowing creature in front of you gives a silent goodbye and proceeds to plop down what appears to be a hat a straw small straw hat and for the first time one pearl warren gives a big smile to her and turns towards you all You say Reaching, goodbye. She nods. I like your hat. He smiles up at you and says, begins to take your hand. And with this, for a moment, as both of you see, for a while, poor. Dear God, Pearl Warren. I knew that was going to happen one time. One time it was going to curse me with my naming. One Pearl. Given it into the hands of safety. To return to her family. And in this moment, the two individuals that accepted the promise of one Fergus McKinley this passion that he had. The reason why he was unable to rest is now fulfilled. And for a moment, you see him. Both of you do. Both Battery and Dahi. See him smiling down at the safety of this little girl. As his last will was to save Pearl, something that he accepted from what he accepted to do for the last remaining butts. <laughs> that was the last time I break with that, dear God. That was such he smiles such and slowly fades away. With that, this kind of sad, almost not really sad, but saw a moment, is interrupted by a car, car horn. As down below, someone's waiting to pick up some people. Hold on. Oh, that's a really fancy car. Who's that for? Uh, I think I think that's my ride. It's down here. Someone driving a car that was left to him in the last will and testament of one <laughs> one of the many Chuckle fucks. Edlin McKinley left his sports car to her. Thus, a pair of sunglasses, she rolls down the window. I would hurry up if I was you. Oh, I gotta guess, head on out. Ah, yes, before you go, one thing. Yeah. Dahi just kind of like shoves a slip of paper into his hands. Is this like a read later sort of scenario? It's in, in case you need it. I managed to come into a certain amount of properties, shall we say, and I've been uh, using a few contacts to get them off the record and not associated with me, but they have the addresses and the people you need to contact in case there's anywhere you need to lay low. 
Yeah. Thanks. I, I I don't really know what else to say. Uh... Just don't go attacking no more military convoys, all right? That's what started this whole mess in the first place. Well, wasn't military convoys, but yeah, he scratches the back of his head. Potato, potato. Well, I mean, there's, there's like a, a gang. I think it's a. He just, he just waves it off, and he's like, ah. I guess I'll see you guys around. Come on, Fee. Tell Charlotte I said hi. Will do. You sure you only want it to be a hi? I don't know what you're talking about. Aye, uh, fair enough. Uh, let's get Pearl over to our folks. And with that, that is exactly what... You all did. Some having other responsibilities elsewhere. The members of Counterforce that, well, volunteered to help them move up to a farm is, uh, I guess, varied. You guys arrived after driving up a long road into a massive farm. Almost like a giant industry is here. For some reason, Wild Card made you uh, pull the truck over when you um, got to the front entrance to ride in the back to remember the old days. So here he is. Good will just sit in the back of the truck. Nothing uh, beats it. This is a kind of a nice place. Are you sure about this, Wild Card? 100%. I already okayed it. All right. Plus, uh, my folks could always use some hands around the, the place. Well, about that. He, like, looks over to you, Fraser. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take your offer. <sighs> Sounds good. Good to have yeah. you on board. Keep your enemies closer and... Like your friends. What's it saying? Your friends close? Enemies closer? Yeah, that. Wait. Well, I don't really have friends, so. Are, are we your enemies? I mean, not you, but like. Counterforce? Uh, oh. Oh. Oh, I get it now. Yeah. <laughs> what I'm trying to say is your <laughs> What I'm trying to say is you're my enemy. I mean, ally. I'm quite, I'm not sure what this... Do they do, like, background checks? Because there's some stuff back in high school that might make it hard to get in. Uh, I'll make it work. Don't worry about it. God, this conversation has the combined brain cells of, like, two. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. You know, surprisingly that, you know, the IQ of the overall group, you expect it to rise with more people, but he, like, tanks it? <laughs> <laughs> Frazier doesn't help either. <laughs> all, all he knows how to do is shoot, shoot. <laughs> he is, like, he knows anything when it involves military. If you take military out of it, he's just gone. <laughs> it's like or a cars. math word problem that has military in it, and he gives the exact answer, but it's, like, two trains, and he's just like, I don't know what it is! It's the Trains same problem! <laughs> Trains aren't cars. <laughs> With that wild card, you knock on your humble home to be greeted by your parents. Oh, I did it again. I should have taken your arm away from you. But you know what? It doesn't matter. It's fine. There's a robot one. You just have the sleeve down. It works. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's fine. And with that, the Warren family moves into the wild card farm. That's not what it's called, but, you oh, know, fine. it's fine. The group, well, Pearl, for the time being, remains safe. Hidden away at a very large farm up north. 
As time came and went, Squad B eventually returned to Fort Carter. The events of Saint Asaph floating into a distant thought, eventually making it back to the flow of work. For the next few months, nothing on the scale of Saint Asaph occurred, but Division B was kept busy regardless. It wasn't soon until the small squad slowly began to, well, be filled up with a lot more new faces. Boop. Currently, uh, this is the first day back at work and someone has had his car delivered. And it is currently wedged in the door. Hey, Pembroke, oh, you're on the other side. Uh... <laughs> In the hallway, trying to like lift it. This it weighs a ton. <laughs> Gotta move it left, sir. Why did you did want to bring the car here? <laughs> left. Would somebody please tell me why we're doing this? Because what? the boss said so. The boss says go. Well, I sleep here anyways. Might as well have my car here. This isn't an actual car. I'll yeah, show you. It is incredibly heavy and unwieldy. Just try pulling. No, you don't say. <laughs> Cast shimmy in a bit. Going, edging the other way, like out of it, like further out. You're pushing <laughs> the wrong way. It's left. <laughs> As you guys almost begin to realize, uh, it is wedged to where when you guys let go, it's just floating halfway into the door frame. Like you can <laughs> crawl under it. <laughs> Okay. Just crawl under. Oh, God, uh... I feel like this is fitting <laughs> for the entry point to your area. <laughs> <laughs> What's that supposed to mean? Uh, does this happen with all new guys? No. I kind of just got does like what happened? I don't know, like with a this initiation. Thing, yeah. Well, at least yes. You know. At least you had like five people in the room. It was just me for like a month. Every time we get a new person, we wedge a car in the door so they have to crawl under. You know, you're like showing dominance or something. I don't know. <laughs> Unfortunately, I did not have a time to get his counterforce uh, outfit done, his pog, but just imagine him in a counterforce outfit as he is officially a part of Squad B. Yeah. However, he had, there's no beds in here for him. Dang. <laughs> Dang. That's all right. They... You can have one of these beds. I I've got my own. How comfortable yeah. is this? He just climbs up into it, and it's still wedged, like it's not even falling or anything. <laughs> How? <Use your> hammer. <laughs> I'm assuming they wouldn't look highly upon us knocking out the wall. I don't look highly too. upon us, anyways. This is true. Yeah, knock out a point. new. What if we just like make a new door? Yeah, what if we make a double white door? Exactly. Oh man, we could Wait, fit even bigger machines guys? in here too. We could get the oh, two-player version of the Dance Dance Revolution. What? That would be awesome. Why did I agree to this? Our bunks is not becoming an arcade. It's already uh, an arcade. Attitude. Oh, tonsil hockey? I haven't played that since I was a kid. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> he just rushes over here. Oh, is there anything yeah. I need to do? Amelia like has the high paperwork. Score. Uh, do we have paperwork to do? I don't know. <laughs> uh, it's kind of a general question to everybody. I mean, I've got a few loose things here and there, but they're not related to Counterforce at the moment. I don't know. Not fill up the paperwork whenever we got back. Uh, for St. Asaph? Yes. Of course I filled out that paperwork. Yeah, I just don't know uh, if we have any work it. like that we've received over our, you know, break. Oh. I think he meant, like, paperwork to be actually brought on like a awesome i got the high officially. score <laughs> he just beat your score on me like go go get it back what? okay <laughs> i believe in you you know what i've had enough of this squad for the day 
<laughs> he just crawled back underneath the, the, <laughs> the couch. He's just gone. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you suppose I need to finish filling out all these lease papers. Lease papers? Uh, I won a lot of, uh, like a lot, like a lot, a lot, at uh, one of the <laughs> casinos. I decided to spend some of the money making a few safe houses that are, uh, well, unofficial safe houses, if you will. Man, those games were so hard, I never went into them. It just comes naturally. Amelia, as you approach, uh, you, you're starting to think that he meant personal high score as he is the lowest on the scoreboard. Ah. He got like four uh, points. You don't you're not even sure how he did that. <laughs> <laughs> like how is that his uh, high score? It's his Whoever's personal high on score. The, <laughs> the opposite side of this car might want to move. I'm gonna uh, try to get it free by slamming my hammer into You went it. to the R&D department, grabbed your hammer, came yeah. back to... <laughs> we, we can smack, probably turn it sideways. It was... I'll take that 14 as you hit it and you hear an explosion of flames and everything as this car just gets launched. Oh no. Over the table and into the Stop Stop no. Revolution. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Oh, I was just about to beat it! Good job, Pembroke. Two birds, one stone. <laughs> uh, sir, it looks like the front of it's pretty messed up now, though. That was a heavy hammer hit. My baby's resilient. Oh, I suppose to get My it. Baby's... It's always a pleasure. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> I do believe it has burst into flames. Where's the fire extinguisher? Probably in the bathroom. <laughs> you don't have one. Stop, drop, and roll! Stop, drop, and roll! Quick, it's throw Tonka Rocky on, on it! He's like, God he damn. has his jacket and he's just like swinging it at it wildly. I got it. He's going to shove in. He also happened to bring canisters. <laughs> he's gonna shove in a cryo one. <laughs> Clear. Huh? <laughs> Move. His feet. Oh. And then slams it into the ground. <laughs> yeah, it's just. <laughs> so, That's uh, all it is. Oh, okay. How do I put in for a new, like, jacket? He holds this up, it's a scorch. Yeah, I'm sure it should be fine. You'll get a uniform eventually. <laughs> this is my. What do you mean, you. <laughs> also, I'm pretty sure you just don't want the game. You don't want the game because you're bad at it, sir. I, I've never played it before in my life. Well, I don't think he's going to be playing it now. It haunts my well, dreams. I put in order for another one, don't worry. Now coated in ice. <laughs> okay. Keep it like that. It's so now memorial. that we have it out of the door, how do we get it out of the ice? <laughs> no. We <laughs> <laughs> wait for it to Okay, I, I, I know what to do. I know what to do. Pembroke will put his hammer on the table. It's just like, all right, if any of you can hold this thing, you're more than welcome to use it. I got it. <laughs> One card is getting like, like a glass of water and is like filling it up with hot water. <laughs> <laughs> Paul goes over and picks her hammer with ease. He's like, oh, cool. Kind of tosses it with his hammer. Said I could use it. Runs over and smacks it against the ground and catches on fire again. <laughs> and this process repeats probably for about an hour. <laughs> Until it went on for another hour. Uh. <laughs> Just another day in Squad B. Yeah. This is why you're called Squad B for sure. <laughs> yeah. Can you imagine Perfect being like a military movies. officer and walking in and seeing that happening in their barracks? <laughs> <laughs> I like to Pembroke imagine any military officer back. yeah, that sees that is literally going to do the opens doors, closes doors, and just walks away. Probably. Yeah. 
Uh, no, Frank Adams was totally there for like uh for the next hour that we were doing that. Uh, like at some point he came in because he was going to do something, and then immediately just face heel turned and walked away. <laughs> oh, there is no way that man would <laughs> like go in there. He would just see that, and just shut the door and leave for sure. Yeah. This went on for another hour until eventually it went on for another hour. That's not the one I want. I'm sure eventually Pembroke would take his hammer away. <laughs> <laughs> eventually. On a different day. Wild card gets word of someone being released from a hospital. And, well... He vanishes from the barracks, hitching a ride all the way to London itself. Wild card, you've ran over here, and, well, the person you wish to see, you see them simply sitting on a beach, be beach, yeah, bench. As, unfortunately for her, there is nobody to pick her up. <sighs> she, like, looks up to uh, you, like, and says, What are you doing here? I came to see you, of course. I got word that you were let out. Uh, can I sit down? Uh, I ran a lot. Uh, sure. Um, excellent. I, I, I don't know why you would come for me. Yeah. Uh, it seemed like you could do some company. That's really kind of you. He smiled. Eh, it's not much. Um, She's safe, by the way. You see a moment across her face where she seems... Genuine happy, like she's about to say something, and then it just slowly goes down to a frown, and she just looks towards her hands that are rested on her lap. I'm, I'm glad. I'm, I'm happy she's okay. He nods. You're not um, a bad person. I, bad people don't feel bad for what they do. What you had me promise to do is not a bad thing. So in my eyes, I think you're a good person. He smiles. She almost opens her mouth, mouth like she's about to say something, but what you said struck true to her. It's something that she's been struggling to deal with. She has tried to be a better person her whole life, and you finally... And for the first time in many years, we're the only person that told her that she was doing a good job. She was actually becoming someone different, someone she wanted to be. She just starts crying, looking at her hands. Wildcard will wrap an arm around her, just kind of in a hug. Dean accepts it. 
No one. Thank you. You're not again. It's just the truth. I just don't know what to say. I do know you need to say to a certain family. It's a path of redemption. Oh, I don't even know where they are. I don't even have a right to face them. You can face them together. They're on my farm. They're in hiding right now. She kind of kind of wipes away the tears on her face trying to recompose herself and she seems to be kind of looking back towards her hands and just uh, okay I don't you can stay I... there too if you need to I, I, I don't know it's your choice I, I don't think I could do it alone. Uh, I don't know what else to say, but thank you. It is my pleasure, of course. Why are you so kind to such a stranger like me? Because there's too much bad in the world. There's too much of it. I've watched the news. I've seen what happens there's not enough kindness anymore but that's because people do bad things and then say bad things and not say kind things and then usually kind things will happen in return the world needs to be kinder to each other rather than crueler that's one reason I joined Counter Forces to make the world better. But not everything is as kind there. I want to make it kinder, but it's a process. He just kind of slowly nods to that. And with that. Wild card sows the seeds to a path of redemption, one of forgiveness. And shortly after, they both made their way up to his farm. So for the first time since the incident, she can truly apologize to the Warren family. And that is not the only one who has sought a path of redemption. Someone else <laughs> within the city itself finds themselves debating outside the doorsteps of a family member of a great friend of his. It's easy. Just go in there and, and tell them. That's that's all I have to do. That's, that's it. Just tell them, you know, I, the truth. Is, uh, I, how, how can I tell them that? No. 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 I, I have to. They should hear it from me. Tell them that William's gone. But he saved my life in order. He sacrificed his life in order to save mine. How do I explain it? Pembroke just sort of stops. This is ridiculous.
As he lifts up his hand to knock on the door, he stops right before he knocks. Come on. Sometimes... Well, in this case, your courage wavers. But your resolve hardens as before you can knock on the door, it opens. And you are greeted inside. The Lane's family. You finally give the closer your best friend's parents deserve. A path of redemption. With that, our story comes to a close. Many journeys and adventures are ahead of each of you. But like always, grief is a strange thing. When someone's life leaves us, it's heartbreaking for all those around them. The ones they are closely bonded with fill the sorrow the strongest. Oops. If that is a loss of a brother, or a loss of their entire squad that they sworn to protect, or the loss of a comrade, a best friend. Grief shows itself to us in many ways. Everyone experiences it differently, but without, without grief, we would not grow. We would not learn from those who have left us. For some, that led to them becoming a leader, something they swore off only years, months ago. While others are forced to step out of the shadow and become their own hero. But with time, that grief becomes distant. The sorrow fades and fades and leaving nothing but memories surrounded in a fog of nostalgia. A nostalgia that will shape who we will become and how we live our very lives. Regardless, whatever it is to come, we will surely be inadequately prepared. And with that, we come to a close. However, all great stories have a uh, after credit scene. Yes, I'm stealing from Marvel. Screw you! I'm doing it, I don't care! Sure, let's go with this one. This one fits. Yes! Somewhere within a park of London, a small girl was found. One lost because they're, well, simply put, their uncle that is dumber in the box of rocks ended up losing them. And two individuals found a young girl on a sitting on a bench um this blonde haired one wearing a big poofy blue coat that's a little bit too big for her are are you are you lost um she like looks around pearl simply just nods her head yes the black haired one just kind of walks how did you get your hair like that? Eve, that is root. I think it looks pretty cool. I wasn't saying it was weird. It's just... It's all spiky, you know? That's, like, not normal. <laughs> <sighs> she, like, still looks around, like... 
Is your parents nearby? <laughs> are, are you are you need a help? She just nods her head, yes. Uh um here. She holds her hand out. Oh. Oh, uh, uh let's let's find them. Do your parents also have hair like that? She shakes her head no. Weird. Why are you weird? <laughs> they walk away off screen. With that. Pearl will return. Return in Avengers? Uh, Avengers uh, Endgame! Uh, <laughs> oh god, she got picked up by the gremlins. <laughs> yeah. Thank you uh, very much for being a part of this. I enjoyed it thoroughly. This was very much... I don't know. I think this honestly ranks for one of the best campaigns I have ran um, all the way through. We had our ups and downs, but I don't know. I, I liked it. I hope you guys enjoyed it, even though with the cancellations and everything. Um, oh, it was yeah. tons of fun. Yeah. But yes. Paul yes. Warren will return in uh, Resonating Desire. Oh. Not oh. Paul. <laughs> Paul will probably return in that one, but don't worry about it. Pearl Warren will return in Resonating Desire. Oh. Oh, that's awkward. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What's awkward? You said that Paul's going to return, and I know exactly what you mean by that. 